Okay guys, so today I'm going to be teaching you how to install a RISC-V processor on your FPGA, the specifically the Nexus A7-100T, as that's the board that I have. Uh, I found this cool GitHub repository by uh, Eugene, who is a principal engineer at Xilinx. I'll link his GitHub down below in the description, and you guys can go ahead and follow along through. So. First things first, um, there are some prerequisites. You guys gotta have one of these boards, um, any one of these four boards, but uh, I will specifically be doing the Nexus A7-100T. Um, the steps will pretty much be the same though. Uh, you're gonna need a Ubuntu machine and the Vitus software, which automatically comes with the Vivado software too. So, And of course, if you're using the Nexus video, the Nexus A7-100T or the Genesis 2, Go ahead and follow his little uh, guide to install the Vivado board files. So uh, I've already installed that, so I won't be showing you that. But if you guys need, let me know in the comment section. I can go ahead and make a quick little video to show you guys how to do that. So the first thing you guys need to do is open up a terminal. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put this in the download section on my computer. But all you have to do is go ahead and just follow these commands right here. So, first one is sudo apt install git make. Enter your password. It'll go ahead, update or download whatever it needs. Go ahead and check yes uh, to anything that it says. And then next we're just going to go ahead and clone uh, this GitHub repository. paste this in, press enter, and this may take uh, a little bit, but depending on your internet speed, it shouldn't be too bad. And then after that, we just go ahead and change to the directory with this command. And now we just go ahead and enter the next two commands. Now, uh, this last line right here, the make update submodules that I went ahead and entered, this command I've noticed takes the longest. So don't be scared if it looks like it's stuck on certain sections because this entire uh, command, the update submodules will take you like, at least for me, it took me like almost a solid 10, 15 minutes. It looks frozen but it isn't. So go ahead and just let it do its thing. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and skip ahead to the next step uh, for the video so you guys don't have to just sit here for 15 minutes. Okay guys, so once that uh, update submodules is done, uh, it probably did take you guys a little while, but now we can go ahead and build the FPGA bitstream. So what you need to do is you're gonna need to do this source command uh, now this right here with the slashes, that is the file path and that will be different for everyone depending on where you guys have installed Bravado. So for me, um, I just have it on my desktop so I'm going to go ahead and enter that. And then after that, you can go ahead and just uh, copy the make command. And this, now you have to edit the board file or excuse me, not board file, but this line right here uh, to suit your board that you're going to be using. So in the guide, it says for the Nexus A7-100T, which is what uh, I'm going to be using, we need to switch the board equals to Nexus-A7-100T. And another thing to note is the 64 B2, that stands for 64 bit and the two is for two cores. Now, from what I know is that the Nexus A7-100T can only do one core, but I'm not completely sure on that. If anybody knows anything different, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Um, and I can go ahead and make a quick little note somewhere in the video later to let people know they can go ahead and do two cores. But for now, I've, you can go ahead and type in one because I know this works and you can go ahead and click enter. 
And this is another command that may take a while. So I can go ahead and uh, come back once this is all done. Okay guys, we're back. And just to let you guys know, this that last command actually took a solid 20 minutes to completely execute and uh, generate that bitstream. So don't be surprised if it takes you guys even longer. So um, now after that, what we need to do is prepare the SD card. So this part is for running Debian Linux on the uh, on your FPGA board. So what we're gonna do is type in that command right here. And paste, make the SD card. A lot of these commands are going to take a bit, so make sure to uh, go ahead and grab a snack and or a coffee or something while these things are executing. I'll be back once this uh, whole thing process is done. Okay, so when the command is running and uh, you're gonna reach a point where it's gonna ask you for the uh, your pseudo password um, go ahead and click enter uh, or enter your password and then after a couple more minutes it's gonna ask you are you sure yes or no and this device right here you're gonna want this to be your uh, SD card and to check to see if this is your SD card you can go ahead open another terminal and type in this command df and it'll go ahead and list all your uh, different disks and uh, stuff like that so what you can do is type in the df command look at the list uh, without your SD card and then afterwards go ahead plug it in type in the same command df and then see which one appears now I already know which one is my micro SD so it's gonna be this one for me and it matches this one right here. So, and keep in mind, this will erase whatever is on that micro SD. So I'm going to click yes, and we're gonna go ahead and let it run its thing again. Now, it again may take a while. Uh, the make micro SD card command is, it's already taken me like 15 minutes, just about like a full 15 minutes, and it's not even done yet. So just keep that in mind. Um, for the whole process. Okay, so now that the micro SD card has been made, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. Uh, you may get this little error right here, but go ahead and just ignore it. Uh, I've went ahead and finished this entire guide and I've had no issues with that one strange error. Uh, if anybody knows anything different, again, feel free to let me know but at the end of the day, I still managed to boot Debian Linux on the FPGA. So next thing we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna go ahead and open Vivado. So we got to program the FPGA flash memory. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and paste this in, enter it, and then we're gonna type in this command right here, and copy and paste that in right here. Now keep in mind you're gonna need to uh, modify this. So again the board you want to change this to Nexus dash a 7 dash 100 T and of course you're gonna switch this to the configuration of what you did before. I did one core so we're gonna go ahead and do one core with the Nexus 7 a 7 100 T. Enter and it's gonna go ahead and do its thing. So it's starting up uh, your Bovado and it's gonna go ahead and open the project. Okay, so now following the rest of the guide, what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna go ahead and open the hardware manager uh, and open the target board. So at this point, you want to go ahead and make sure your board is connected and it is powered on. 
through USB. So we're going to go ahead and go to the hardware manager. And that's going to be right here, open hardware manager. It's going to open it up. And you're going to click uh, open target. You can click auto connect. And it should automatically connect to the board that you have connected to your computer. So now go ahead and select tools. Go to add configuration memory device right here. Click on that. And then you're going to go ahead and because we're going with the Nexus A7100T, we're going to look for the expansion S25. FL128S. Oops. Go ahead and delete this. And then we're going to go ahead and select this one, as this is the same one that the guide has set right here. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And then you want to program the configure memory device now. Click OK. Um, and then add the configuration file. So this is where you're going to have to go into your own file explorer and uh, wherever you had the git uh, clone you're going to need to go ahead and go to the workspace and then the rocket 64b1 or 2 whichever one you made um, and then double click go in there and select the mcs file click ok and then go ahead and click ok now it's going to go ahead and program the device um, you know and do all that stuff So it may take a bit, uh, another minute or two. Okay, so now that the flash programming has completed successfully, what you're gonna wanna go ahead and do now, make sure to slide in that SD card that you made earlier. Go ahead and take that out of your computer and put that in to your Nexus A7 board. So once that's in, you can go ahead and come back to your Vivado and uh, go ahead and right click on your FPGA device right here. And then you wanna go ahead and click boot from configuration memory device. Now it's going to go ahead and be booted. So the next step is you're actually going to want to go ahead and try to run the Debian Linux, of course, and you can do this through logging in over the UART terminal. So to figure that out, I'll go ahead and show you right now. You're going to go ahead and open a new terminal. Go ahead and do sudo mini term. Go ahead and enter your password. Um, it'll go ahead and tell you which uh, available port you have. And you'll see right here the diligent USB device. So um, we can go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and control Z. And we can go type in one more time sudo mini term dash dev dash tty usb one and then go ahead and click or what sorry we're going to go ahead and make sure to add in the baud rate so that's going to be one one five two hundred click enter and then you're going to be really weirded out so you see how it's just really weird like the first couple things um they didn't actually even look like numbers or letters but as you can see here, it's going to go ahead and start up the uh, Debian Linux. This process does take a long time. Uh, just like many other commands for this GitHub guide, this entire process takes a while. So we're going to go ahead and let it run. Okay, so now you can see we're at the Debian login screen. So the host name, the username, and login right here. So go ahead, Debian, and then a password, Debian. Let's go to go ahead and log you in. And this right here, as uh, garbled as this line looks, um, you are actually in the terminal for the Debian Linux that's running on your FPGA right now. So to show it, we can go ahead and do echo, oopsie, go ahead and start to try this again, echo space hello world. So click enter, 
it'll go ahead and type back out hello world so that is it there you go guys now you have db and linux running on your fpga um, in this example we went overhead and did the nexus a7 100t board but this applies to any of the other boards that uh, are here listed on the guide such as the vc707 nexus 2 um, any one of those boards so Hope you guys managed to learn a lot from this guide. Huge shout out to Eugene for uh, making this guide the principal engineer at Xilinx. Thanks for watching.